Good evening. I'd like to call the March 5th, 2018 Old Bridge Township Council meeting to order, please. Would you stand for a Pledge of Allegiance? And then please stand for a moment of silence and our prayer. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd now like a moment of silence, please, which is customary in this chamber. We would like to honor those who defend us both here and abroad, for those who are our first responders and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Mr. Murphy, the prayer. O oh Lord, bless thy servants in the ministry of public affairs who serve thee in these chambers. Give them quiet minds and hearts that they may hear the voice. Help them to know when to speak, when to be silent. Give them strength to oppose the wrong and uphold the right. And grant that they have a good conscience and soul at peace with thee and with one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Murphy. Please be seated. <clears throat> This meeting is being held in conformance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice has been given to the newspaper and notice of the meeting has been posted in public places. Next open public meeting of the council will be held on Monday, March 19, 2018 at 7.30 p.m. Mrs. Brown. Here. Mr. Cahill. Here. Dr. Greenberg. Here. Mr. Merwin. Present. Mr. Murphy. Here. Mr. Peschetti. Here. Mr. Rizzoli. Here. Mrs. Walker. Here. President Sohar. Here. Nine present. Okay, the first order of the evening will be presented by the mayor. Thank you, Council, and welcome, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I stand here tonight very proud as a mayor to uh, make two promotions in our police department, two um, long-term, long-time uh, police officers uh, um, dedicating their, a good portion of their life to the community of Old Bridge. Uh, tonight is their night now that they get moved up, they get promoted to the next rank, and they play now an even more uh, important role in the community as, as they move up that ladder. So at this time, I would like to ask Scott, please come forward, Scott, Chief. Uh, before Officer uh, Gumprecht is sworn in, I'd like to read a little bit of, of his bio. Prior to his appointment to the Old Bridge Police Department, Lieutenant Scott Gumprecht was employed by the Conrail Police Department as a police officer. Scott was sworn in as a patrol officer with the Old Bridge Police Department on December 27, 1993. He graduated from the Middlesex County Police Academy in May of 1994. He received the Outstanding Performance and Physical Fitness Award. Upon graduating the Police Academy, he was assigned to the Patrol Bureau. In June of 1996, he was transferred to the Detective Bureau, serving as a narcotics detective. Scott returned to the Patrol Bureau in October 1997. During that time, he researched and wrote the department's field training and evaluation program and became one of the field first field training officers. He was also involved with the department's firing range renovation project. He returned to the Detective Bureau in June 2006, serving as a criminal investigation detective. Scott was promoted to the rank of sergeant on April 9, 2007 and returned to the Patrol Bureau where he served as a patrol supervisor. On January 23, 2017, Scott was promoted to the rank of lieutenant, where he was in charge of a patrol squad and served as a station commander. In May of 2017, Lieutenant Gumprick was transferred to the Police Administration Bureau, where his duties consisted of field training and evalu evaluation program manager, training officer, fleet manager for the department's vehicles, manager of the department's budget and purchasing team, internal affairs, uh, internal affairs investigator, as well as the supervisor for the township's animal shelter. 
Lieutenant Gumpery is a department firearms instructor and armorer. He has been training instructor for use of force, first aid, CPR, and the LEAD program. He has served the department's members as a state delegate of local PBA 127 and the past president of FOP Lodge 22. Throughout his career, Lieutenant Gumprick has represented the Old Bridge Police Department as a leader and role model. He has received departmental accommodations and appreciation acknowledgments from the public for his assistance. Lieutenant Gumprick is a veteran of the United States Army. He is married to his high school sweetheart, and they have two grown sons. It is my pleasure to promote Lieutenant Gumprick to the rank of captain within the Old Bridge Police Department. I, Scott Gumprecht. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? To support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same and to the government. To the same and to the government. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of the office. All the duties of the office. Of captain. Of captain. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Next, we have Peter Lepresti, was sworn into the Old Bridge Police Department on October 5, 1993. He graduated from the Middlesex County Police Academy in May of 1994. Upon graduating from the Police Academy, he was assigned to the department's Patrol Bureau. In 1996, Pete was transferred to the Detective Bureau and was assigned to the Narcotics. In 1999 and 2003, Pete won the Narcotics Officer of the Year Award from the State of New Jersey. He is the only officer to have received this award twice. For the past seven years, he has served as a supervisor of the Narcotics Bureau. During his career, Pete has been assigned to various outside agency. He has served with the United States Department of, Drug, of Justice Drug Enforcement Agency, the United States Secret Service, the FBI, the New Jersey State Police, and the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office Task Force. In addition, Pete served as an instructor for the New Jersey Attorney General's Top Gun program for 10 years. In his role as an instructor, he trained undercover officers throughout the state. Pete also served as a delegate for the PBA 127 Union and as a treasurer of the FOP Union. Pete is a veteran of the United States Navy. He has received many commendations and acknowledgments from the department as well as the public. He is married to his best friend for 32 years and has two grown children and a five-year-old grandson. It is my pleasure to promote Detective Sergeant Peter Lepresti to the rank of lieutenant within the Old Bridge Police Department. I, Peter Lepresti, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same and to the government. To the same and to the government. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. That I will faithfully. I will faithfully. Impartially. impartially and justly perform. And justly perform 
all the duties of the office of lieutenant. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Help me so help me God. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys, for being here tonight. Thank you. Congratulations to both of the officers. We now will be going into the body of the meeting, so I don't know if you're welcome. You're more than welcome to stay. <laughs> However, if not, have a great evening. <laughs> We're just going to take a moment to let those who want to leave oh, yeah, yeah. say good night. Yeah, it is very nice guy. Genuine. Good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're back. Um, the first thing this evening is Mayor with Council Concurrence, Business Administrator Hamanshu Shah. I'd like to make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, the motion was made by Mr. Paschetti mm -hmm. and the second by Dr. Greenberg. Okay. Roll Mrs. Mrs. Brown? Abstain. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Point of order to the attorney. The, uh, yes, sir. The, uh, the items that I requested, uh, the posting of the job, quite clearly states, and it doesn't matter whether it was on the township website or whether it was the uh, supposed uh, posting with the New Jersey League of Municipalities that the minimum requirement should be a bachelor's degree in business, public administration, or related fields, an MBA or an MPA preferred, at least five years of municipal experience as a business administrator or township manager of a large municipality. I, I don't believe that Mr. Shaw has had the five years of experience as a business administrator or a town manager of a large municipality. So we, we'd be violating what we went out and advertised for. Would we not? This way I would address it. The, um, actually, I wasn't privy to the, the, to the, to the adver advertisement. However, the, both the state statute and your code uh, has a provision dealing with the business administrator. And for, for purposes of Volbridge, <clears throat> it talks about um, in Section 555, it says the business administrator shall be a person of demonstrated executive and administrative ability. He shall, prior to his appointment by the mayor, with the voice and consent of the council, be qualified in terms of knowledge of and experience in accepted practice from respect to the duties of his office 
as here and after stated. And it continues, um, and it gives the assignment with respect to what it is that the administrator would do in the ordinance. So certainly from the, from the town's code perspective, it just talks about having knowledge and experience and accepted practice in respect to the dues of the office. Now, with respect to Mr. Shaw's experience, I mean, certainly I think he's been here and he can speak to that, but I don't know that the advertisement, um, Mr. Merwin, is, is, the, is a basis upon which, um, certainly it's not statutory that you hold those types of, uh, those qualifications. Um, and and the, this, this code section pretty much follows the statute. So that, from my perspective, would be the guide. Obviously, a township can always ask for more with respect to any provision. Um, and I'm not sure to what extent um, the ad and Mr. Shaw's qualifications match, um, other than the one you raised with respect to having served at least five years as a business administrator. Well, but, but I know he served as in that role as an acting capacity in prior years as well. Matter of fact, he's, he's serving above and beyond what he's allowed to serve at the present time. Um, I believe he, if you continue to read 556, you would see that he was entitled to uh, a 90-day appointment and then two 90-day appointments, which comes out to 270 days. And I think we're up around 300 now. I um, but so we'll go out and advertise we will minimize the people that can apply for the job because most people that would read this would say, well, I don't have five years experience as a, as a business administrator and um, not apply. So we may have shut the door on quite a few qualified applicants. Matter of fact, we may have even shut the door on qu quite a few qualified taxpayer act uh, applicants since the uh, the ordinance does call for uh, the applicants to live in town if the council so required. Excuse me a minute, Dave. I thought we voted on this. Why are we voting again? John, you have to follow Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you do have to follow Okay. Procedure. Well, we, we did vote on it. Um, unfortunately, I mean, if anybody remembers uh, last week's meeting, Mr. Paschetti had quite a few um, concerns, and very valid concerns, of, of uh, Mr. Shaw serving two jobs to the township, one being the chief financial officer, which is a tenured position, and the other being the business administrator. Matter of fact, almost to the point of where he was accusing him of going to be able to steal money. I, I, I believe it was something very similar to that, if not verbatim. Uh, and lo and behold, between that meeting and this meeting, Mr. Paschetti has come with an epiphany, and he not only changed his mind, he's moving it. Right? He's, he's making the motion to move it. Uh, I don't know what deals have been made, and, uh, but believe me, there's some deals that were made, believe me, folks at home. Um, you have a, an, applica an application calling for five years of municipal experience as a business administrator or a township manager of a large municipality, of which he does not have. And here we are going to bestow this job. Now, oh, and then one of the other things at the bottom of it, because we haven't gotten to that point, because we're going to get to this point, is that the salary will be commensurate with the experience. Well, since he has no experience as the business administrator, I guess his salary is going to be quite down the bottom of that, uh, of, of the salary guideline. So um, my vote is... Uh, I want to say it, and I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to say no. Believe me, I want to preface this vote with something, but I'm going to, I'm going to take the high road and say no. Mr. Murphy? Why are we voting again? 
we voted once. Why do we have to re-vote? Every time they don't get their way, they want to re-vote. Is that, is that what it is? I don't understand why we voted. We voted. It was no. The Republicans didn't like it. And they, they got uh, Pescadito to change his vote. And now we have to vote again? I don't understand. Is, is that legal with you? Yeah. Okay. Is it legal with me? Well, well it's you not. You care, well, right? No. <laughs> I care. It's not so much legal with me. It's permitted by your administrative code. So we can vote I, every again, time. Again, under Section 532 of the uh, code, it, which uh, d d talks about mayoral appointments. And remember, these positions, the administrative positions uh, under state statute, uh, are mayor appointments, and there's certain uh, positions, including the business administrator, that requires advice and consent of council. So, to the extent that those positions um, are being made and being appointed, that's the mayor's prerogative under state statute. The code has a provision that, <clears throat> specifically dealing with uh, this type of situation, because look, it's probably it probably happens on in many municipalities where an initial appointment may be rejected, um, and then your code has a provision that says that the council may at any time within the 90-day period, which meaning if, if, there, if the appointment was initially rejected, reconsider an appointment which has, which has been rejected. So it's certainly within the uh, uh, township code to reconsider an appointment that has been rejected. And I, and I guess it was at the last meeting it was rejected, so you're within that 90-day period. And it goes for anything? Mayoral appointments. So if we, if we want to, uh, if we can get Piscitti to change his mind again, we can bring it up again? That's what it seems like. Uh, I can't, I'm not talking to that, I'm not addressing that point well, because I, I have can't some read other someone's things mind. To say. But again, under the code, mayoral appointments, uh, there, it, there, is a rec there is a provision that allows for council to, re to reconsider an appointment which has been rejected. <clears throat> well, I feel that's ridiculous. It's not right. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, the mayor obviously doesn't have too much faith in him either. If he had faith in him, why did he let it go when he knew he wasn't going to have the votes? He had plenty of time. Obviously, he did not want Mr. Amatu there, or he would have done it in November, December, April, May. Obviously, he doesn't trust him. So, what, what was with that, Mayor? Please do not speak for me, Mr. Murphy. Why didn't Please you do it do when you had the votes? For me. If I didn't have confidence in Mr. Shah, he wouldn't be here. And I made it quite clear last week why he should be here. So do not speak for me. I have 110% confidence in Mr. Shah and his ability, or to be somebody else sitting here. I'm not going to lower myself to have an intelligent conversation with you when you make statements like that. Look, so, you made a statement about me last, night, last week. Mark. I'm not going to say what it was because it was a horrible statement. And if I, if I, I almost came back in. Okay. I'm not going to go into that. You know what you said. Please vote your conscience. That's what you said. I do there vote for. my vote conscience. And my conscience is, but why didn't you vote for him earlier? I don't get a vote for him. Vote? I put him in a position. But why didn't you bring the votes up when you had him? Okay, I'm not done. Well, anyway, I feel he's not capable of doing this job. He's proven to me several times he hasn't. I can take for, for fact, um, he had told me that he thought it was a great idea that the person in charge of uh, public works put the uh, GPSs in the trucks. That is horrible. These are people that work here. These are not animals. This is a free country. I think he went a little overboard with that. The job you don't need GPSs. That's the person's job who's the boss. You're showing that you don't even trust your own people. That's one thing. The other thing, code enforcement, I've got five complaints in the last two weeks. Obviously, nothing you've done about that. Tony, what? Not to interrupt you, but we're talking about yeah. one subject. I don't mean to be I'm talking about why he's not qualified for the job. Yep, yeah, but we're getting into code now, different areas. Uh, we have to stay on topic. Madam Chairperson. But it, no, no vote. No, no, you're not going to listen. Yeah. I ran, I ran to represent the people. Obviously, the Republicans <clears throat> are starting to represent themselves first, and maybe the Rep the people. Then I am still here for the people. I will not change my vote because I got so many people calling me, telling me I did the right thing, and I will continue doing the right thing. 
and that's how I feel. If you want me to just say that, you have one person that will vote for all three on that side, and I'm ending it there then. Madam Chairperson, a point of order for the attorney again. What are you telling me no on a point of order? Dave, we haven't even gone through the rest of the council. I, I have I, a point of order for the attorney to ask. It may give some light to the rest of the council. I have a very legal question to ask. Go right ahead. Ask your question. All right. Um, Mark, you weren't here. Um, but um, as far as the business administrator and the uh, chief financial officer in a township the size of Old Bridge. Do you see any conflicts that uh, would present itself um, having both positions? Look, my, the, to address that point, uh, statutorily, neither statutorily nor is there an ordinance that prohibits it. Um, and, that ain't uh, my question. Well, I understand <laughs> that, but so that's where I have to start because that's the okay. basis upon which I render, would have to render a decision to the extent that there may be uh, with respect to conflicts. Um, I'm not sure if that, you know, in, the, uh, in situations where that may arise, I think that's something that any person who would hold that position would have to be uh, cognizant of um, and obviously uh, would have to keep that in mind. Uh, remember, ultimately, the, uh, you know, the mayor has oversight over both positions as well, which he would continue to exercise. Um, you know, and, and I think with respect to uh, backstops with, on, on, on both situations, um, for instance, with respect to the budget, I mean, at some, uh, ultimately, once the budget's been referred to the council, that becomes your budget, uh, so you have the ability to scrutinize. Uh, council also has the ability to scrutinize any of the bill list, and, and those items are, uh, that are presented to it. Um, so, it, you know, just Mr. Merwin, to, to, to answer that in a vacuum, um, and that's what I would be doing. I can't say, you know, recognize at this point a specific area of conflict, but I think it's no different than any other position uh, to which somebody's appointed. I think the uh, situations, facts dictate uh, when a, a conflict may or may not arise. And so my recommendation to, uh, to Amanchu as well as any other uh, township employee would be to be cognizant of, of your position, and to the extent that there, there is a potential for conflict, raise it, address it with the right people, and then make sure that uh, it's resolved before any final decision is made. Very good, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Murphy, can I, Mr. Murphy, can I have a vote, please? For the record. No. Mr. Peschetti. Well, I was going to remain quiet, but I, I have to just say this. My comments last week were in no way representative of Mr. Shaw. I was re referring to the future. Now, this position is for a year and a half. Mr. Shaw is already doing the job. He's doing a fine job. He's an upstanding man, citizen and public servant, and in no way did I want, want to or mean to impugn his character. Uh, and I'm very sorry for that, if that's the way it came out. Very sorry. My vote is yes. Mr. Rizzoli. No. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Ms. Uh, President Sohar. Yes. Six yes, two no, one abstention. That's too many. That's too many. Five, 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 five. I think it's five yes. Five yes, three, one abstention, three no, right? One abstention. Okay. okay. What's the third? No. Um, Mark voted no, right? Yeah. And Murphy voted John no. John voted no, and Dave voted no, Dave right? Voted no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. And then I think Adina abstained, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So All right. Five yes, three no, and one abstention. Okay. Now we'll move on to approval of minutes of previous meetings. I'll move it. I'll second it. Okay. Mrs. Dr. Greenberg, Mrs. Walker for the approval of minutes combined February 5th, 18. 
Do I have a motion? Yes, and a second. Okay, roll call. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Abstain. Mr. Murphy? Abstain. Mr. Peschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Sohar? Yes. Seven yes to abstention. Next public hearings and ordinances for second reading. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry. Bill List, please, Mrs. Walker. Accounts payable, March 5th, 2018, $9,665,607.78. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Second. Moved by Ms. Dr. Greenberg, second by Mr. Piskitty. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Paschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Nine yes. Payroll, March 2nd, 2018, $865,272.57. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Oh. Moved by Dr. Greenberg, <clears throat> second by Mr. Paschetti. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Paschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Nine yes. Payroll overtime, March 2nd, 2018, $42,619.07. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Dr. Roll call. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Down. We have a breakout of the overtime, please. Breakdown. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. It's the overtime. Excuse okay. me. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Council Presidents. As indicated, the total overtime for this per, uh, period was $42,619.07. Um, in this pay period, there is an uptick in, public, uh, in the snow removal uh, of $7,630.20 for the Public Works Division Department and $1,309.72 for the Recreation Department. For the Police Department, the total overtime for the period represented $25,757.93. When you deduct the grant, $381.30 and the ETO, $5,117.13. The net overtime for this period is $20,259.50, representing 397.25 hours of men and women hours. Uh, we still have one lieutenant injured on duty. That's my report. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Second. We have it already. Oh, yeah, we did. I already have it. Thank you. Going home. <laughs> Roll call, please. Ms. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Paschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Nine yes. And that concludes the bill list. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Uh, next is public hearing and ordinances for second reading. The first one is H1, Release Reduction Performance Guarantee, Woodward Commons, Foxborough Village 2. Application number 66-99P. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Fred Iskowitz, I-S-K-O-W-I-T-Z. I'm here on behalf of Foxborough Village 2. Um, this matter was before the council last week. Uh, Stephen Katz was not available tonight, so I'm appearing on behalf of Foxborough Village 2. We're seeking the release of the cash and performance bonds. Good evening, Mrs. Shapiro. Good evening, Council President. Council, um, this application was for an office building that's located on Woodward Drive um, between Rolling Meadows Court and Ferry Road. Um, it, it's actually tucked behind the kinder care that's located on Ferry Road. The bonded site improvements were um, the parking lot, striping, drainage, lighting, and landscaping. Um, the performance guarantee that was posted in 2001 was 98000 $376.18. Um, in bond for, uh, portion of it was $88,538.56, of which 10% was in cash, 
$9,837.62. There were no previous reductions to the performance guarantee, and we did do a site visit um, knowing that it's been a substantial amount of time since the bonded improvements were completed. We found um, everything to still be in good condition. Um, there was one uh, complaint that we had received um, based on the notices that had gone out, and that was um, 12 Rolling Meadows Court. Um, however, that is actually outside of what was bonded um, for this application. Um, the engineering department is looking into that complaint, um, and we will get back to that resident um, outside of this bonding requirement. Um, we do recommend a submission of a two-year maintenance guarantee in the amount of $8,489.25 um, and payment of all outstanding escrow fees. Um, as done in the previous pass, um, for applications that um, had a lengthy amount of time that has lapsed, we've um, asked for the maintenance guarantee, um, but know that the council can waive that requirement. Um, it is just not in my purview to do that. Um, so we would have no objections uh, due to the length of time that has passed if the council so wishes to then um, not require that maintenance guarantee. Anything else, Mrs. Shapiro? That's okay. it. Okay. Um, anyone in the public like to speak about this? Anyone have any concerns in the public? Seeing no hands, I will call the public portion. And now, council, anyone have any concerns? Mr. Paschetti? Yeah, I, I'm sorry if you said this, but I, I, must, I might have missed it. Was there any work that still needs to be done? No. It's all complete? Yes. So if it's complete, why uh, do we require any sort of uh, bond? Uh, again, a maintenance guarantee is only required um, once the bonded items are complete. Um, that's usually done immediately after the work is complete. In this scenario, the work was completed in 2001. The time has lapsed, and they never asked for the release. It's not in my purview to say that an applicant shouldn't post that maintenance guarantee, but it certainly is in the council's purview to do that. Um, I make the recommendation er here because I have no um, way of saying that they're not required to do so. Um, however, I do recommend to council that since the time has elapsed, and um, the, the property is in good condition, that there's no requirement to, to require that maintenance bond. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to move it. Uh, any, wait, any of the comments? Mrs. Walker. Yeah, I wanna agree this work was completed in 2001. That was a long time ago, and I don't see any reason to hold the maintenance bond. Anyone on this side? Anybody for comments? Okay. My own personal opinion. Unfortunately, I would like to see it held. Um, I just feel that we've had so many issues with different things that come up that I really, my opinion, I would hold it. But the, the, the council has their, you know, right to decide what they'd like to do. Okay. All right. So. That, yeah. I, I, I realize it's that long. That's just my opinion. Everyone else do, you know, as you see fit. Anyone else have comments? Can I? Say something else, Council sure. President. One more. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you tell me what are the problems that you're talking about? Uh, no, I just I just think that it's it's a good thing not to set a precedent of not holding a maintenance bond. Just you know, for the sake of holding it for the amount of time that when it's released. That's just my opinion. But it has been 17 years. Yeah. No. That that's that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion as well. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Can I speak? Yep. Go Was ahead. this the house that the um, foundation fell down? It was either 12 or 10. I can't remember. This is an office building. Huh? We're, we're, we're talking about the release of the Oh, the of office, office building. building. Yes. And the office building is 17 years old? Yes. Okay. Right. So anyone else have any questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, move it. No, we don't. Okay. Are, are we moving it, including no maintenance bond or well, maintenance bond? Well, I, I think I would suggest that who, if someone makes the motion, uh, they can include according to the discretion whether they want to include a maintenance bond or not include a maintenance bond. I think based upon comments, I'd recommend you make a, uh, make a motion to uh, release the performance guarantee and not require the posting of a maintenance bond. I'll make the motion with the release. Okay, do we have a second? And, second. Not, and not require the posting of the maintenance oh, bond, right. correct? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll second and, it with no requiring also. Okay, Mrs. Walker made the second. Okay, Mrs. Walker, yep. roll call. This is without the posting yep. of a maintenance right. bond, this mm -hmm. vote. Yep. 
Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Without the mayor. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Peschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soho? No. Eight yes, one no. Thank you very much Thank for coming. You. Have a nice evening. Yep, you too. Okay. Next is H2, Release Reduction Performance Guarantee, New Amsterdam Village Associates, Block 4185, Lot 11, Application Number 28-13Z. Mr. Shapiro, is anyone here with you this evening? We called them. Well, as Mr. So K. Our, as as yep. we did the last it time, I... Yep. I don't think we should see it, so I would motion to table. Second. Okay, so there's a motion to table and a second. We have a second? Mr. Merwin seconded. Merwin? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and I, a vote on motion to table. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Peschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? <coughs> Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Sohar? Yes. Nine yes to table. Thank you very much, Mrs. Shapiro. Next is preliminary public comments to the council, subject to the following con conditions and restrictions. During the public preliminary public portion of the meeting, any person may address the township council on one subject for a maximum of five minutes. Any such person desiring to speak during the preliminary public portion shall first sign a list maintained by the township clerk for such purpose. Comments during the preliminary public comment portion of the meeting shall not encompass second reading ordinances or any other matter for which comment or a public hearing is to occur at the meeting. Mark Jamison. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Mark Jamison. The topic of my discussion this evening would be the TNR program on the Lawrence Harbor uh, beach section, the beachfront. Okay, although I'm not directly involved, I'm not a member. Okay, my wife is one of the trappers. Okay, but I see a lot of things. I spend a lot of time with her down there. I see the, <coughs> excuse me, the dedication of the other feeders. You know, I'm down there with her because I'm walking the boardwalk or whatever, and a lot of positive things have come from this, <clears throat> excuse me, from the program. The overall population has definitely decreased in numbers because when we initially started, obviously there was no program and there were cats that were unneutered, and the outcome of that was there was many kittens down there, maybe 20, 30 kittens, I would say. And when we first started out, we started trapping them. It took a while. They were actually located in the jetty sections where there's a lot of rocks, they were very inaccessible to get to. The rocks are slippery. So I spent a lot of time out there on them rocks, going in and out of there, trying to get them. Because when they're in the rocks, they, they try, tend to go right back in there. It's very complicated, long story short, to get them. But we were successful at this. We removed 30 cats, 30 kittens, I should say. And they were all through Happy Homes, which is an agency that adopts cats. Okay. We also caught some uh, adult cats which were ear tipped. There's probably 10 there right now on location. These have been rabies vaccinated. We have all the paperwork to prove that. Like I say, they have ear tips so people can identify them by that. And some of them were actually adopted out to friendlier versions. You know, some of them were adoptable, obviously, and they're friendly. And we were able to have them adopted out. And uh, there's been a lot of positive things, like I say, according, you know, I think it's working out well. But just like everything else in life, there's always gonna be, you can't keep everybody happy. So there's a negative side to it. There's a lot of negativity going on as far as on social media, you know, people saying they don't like the cats down there. Okay, there's personal confrontations with myself and my wife, you know, when we're down there doing what we're doing. Okay, there's been some damage that was created down there also because what was going on, the one uh, lady that was the uh, feeder, she was making these like really nice box enclosures and they were under the boardwalk where they weren't in sight of people walking by. So they were enclosed, okay? Not only did they provide shelter for the cats while they were eating, you know, if there was water, rain or something, but they also contained the food plates. 
from blowing away, what have you. They're all concealed, okay? So recently it was brought to my attention, though, that someone had gone down there and destroyed these enclosures in an area that was already passed for this procedure. And like I say, they were under the boardwalk, out of sight, mind, everything. Nobody could see them, and they destroyed them. So my wife brought me down there, and she showed me, and I was like, this is terrible. You know what I mean? This is an act of violence in our area. You know what I mean? Just to break these. And they left the pieces all over the place as trash. You know what I'm saying? So that's not a good thing right there, you know? So uh, I feel what we should do is propose to maybe put a camera system in. A camera system that is self, you know, doesn't need to be monitored all the time. It would be like uh, motion activated. So now all of a sudden, you know, if there's motion or whatever, it will pick up. It doesn't have to be the entire boardwalk, but specifically at these sites where they're feeding the cats, which is like, I think, one, maybe two sites at the most, if these cameras can be there. So in other words, it will not cost the taxpayers any money because they're voice, I mean, motion activated. So we don't have to have constant monitoring. And this, I believe, will alleviate a lot of the hearsay because a lot of people on social media are saying, this was done, somebody was putting food in an area, just throwing food all over the place, and they were like blaming the feeders, saying that they were doing that, making a mess or whatever. There's a lot of cats from the neighborhood that are coming down, you know, from the hills or whatever, that aren't involved in the trap and lease program. These are personal, you know, people's cats. And a lot of people will walk through there and they'll see all these cats and they'll say, oh, there's millions of cats down here. But it's not true. I walk down there almost on a daily basis and you'll rarely see a cat in front of you. They don't cross your path. They're off in the distance, you know, and, and they, they don't bother anybody. I don't believe they bother anybody. So with these cameras in, in effect, we could eliminate a lot of these problems that have been occurring. I mean, this is an ongoing problem. It's, it's bad, you know? And like I say, there's a lot of areas, like public place, a lot of people, there's controversy over, they don't want to have cats in a public area, because some people don't like cats. They're, they're prerogative. Not everybody likes everything. But if you think about it, there's a lot of areas, like Keyport, where I love dogs, I have no problem with dogs, but they have dog walking down there, which is allowed. It's legally pick up after their pet, whatever. Okay, that's fine. But there are people that frequent these areas and enjoy them, although there's dogs there. The dogs aren't attacking them, and the cats aren't attacking anybody. We all just got to get along. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not looking to you know, prosecute anybody or anything, but I think these cameras will be very helpful in the area to weed this out. And not only will it be good for the cats, but it'll also be good for the general area. I mean, look. Look what's going on in the world now. That you know, all kind of crazy things are happening. We can't prevent it, but I think it would be good for the security of the Lawrence Harbor beachfront area to have these cameras. And I don't think it would cost very much, you know, because like I say, they don't have to be monitored. I believe there were cameras in the past, but they got broken. So maybe we could look into engineering something where they would be a little more durable, waterproof, what have you. But basically, closing, I think we could all get along down there, and I think the big word is compromise. You know, feed with the times they feed them, you know what I mean? Because there are wild animals down there, I understand. But as you all know, wild animals like raccoons and skunk, they're nocturnal. They feed at night, you know, usually after the park is closed or late at night. So I don't believe they're a threat, if, if, especially if you keep them in these enclosures. So I really believe that these, these cameras would, would help us along in the long run. I appreciate your time. I have one other person that was here a little late. They got here a little late. They're from New York, and they took the train. If you would allow them to come up and speak for a moment. It's, this is sign-up time only, unfortunately. Oh, okay. She speak after. Yeah, yeah at, she can speak after at the end of the meeting yeah, as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I greatly appreciate you know, the consideration thank you. for the cameras, okay? okay. Thank you thank very, you much. very much. Thank you. Barbara Cannon. Good evening. Um, I thought I'd come down and... Uh, Usually I'm home listening to you and yelling at my yelling into the empty room or or patting uh, you know being happy about what you guys are doing. But anyway, I had to come down tonight because I was very upset about the vote that you took regarding Mr. Shaw last night. I mean a week ago. I am much happier today. I must say. Um, I admit I'm a bit prejudiced. I hired Mr. Shaw back in shortly after I became mayor, and. Uh, he has done an outstanding job for this town. 
He brought this town into fiscal responsibility, set it on the right course, did all the things that made it a viable community. And he has served here for, what, 25 years now? 25 years. And he um, is just, I can't say enough about him. And he's, he's outstanding in his professionalism and the way he deals with um, the council, with the public, the way he does his job, the way he works with the other uh, members of the administration. And I just was dumbfounded that he wasn't overwhelmingly, unanimously approved. He's been doing this job for a number of months. He's done it off and on over the 25 years. I think he even did it for a while when I was mayor. His experience is, um, it's, uh, you know, I, it, I think he's probably one of the most experienced administrators in the area as far as both the finance and with the business he's involved in in many of the decisions. Obviously, the mayor has a lot of faith in him. He's worked with him over the past years and as a business, acting business administrator over the last several months. He wouldn't be recommending him if he didn't know that he could do the job. And I would just hope that you um, get behind him and support him, and he will be there for you. His commitment to this town is 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 just amazing. And to say, you know, that you prefer to have, I heard last week that you want homegrown boy, or homegrown man, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, this is a very large community, complicated, uh, complex, you know, we're the third largest in the county, 22nd in the state, I believe. This isn't a job you can learn quickly, um, get used to this community, know all the ins and outs, know the, the, what the issues are. And, um, you know, if all things being equal, yeah, but you're not going to get somebody with a year and a half left on the mayor's term. People are not going to leave a job that they've had for have job security and come and think that maybe, you know, I'm hoping the mayor will be reelected, but if that doesn't happen, the mayor needs to have his own staff. And so I would just hope you drop the politics. Mr. Merwin, we've had our run-ins, and deal with the issues and let the professionals do their job. Thank you. Paul Lawrence. Yes, hi. my name is uh, Paul Lawrence. I'm at 205 Madison Gardens in Ward 3. Um, you know, I've been, in the last probably five, six months or so, I've been trying to get more involved uh, in the town, I've been coming out to council meetings uh, just wanting to listen to the issues, hear what's going on. Um, and I've been a little disappointed just seeing the lack of turnout uh, from the public audience. And while I have some thoughts, maybe what we, what we might be able to do to help uh, uh, resolve that, um, I have heard uh, something mentioned over the last uh, few months how we do have in the town people who are maybe disabled, sick, physically just unable to come out uh, to uh, represent themselves, to speak uh, to the council uh, every time there's a meeting. Um, so uh, my thought was that I would launch uh, a, via Facebook presence, a, a voicemail box, uh, the ability for people to be able to send messages where I could then come get those messages, and then at the time of council, being able to then speak for those who just can't be here. Um, that might be something where you guys will tell me in your uh, public comments later that's something not able to be done uh, because they have to do it themselves. Um, so I look forward to hearing what you have to say uh, regards to that. Uh, for those who are watching on, on TV or when there's up on uh, YouTube later, um, I went ahead and I, I set it up already just because I'm a bit of an uh, IT guy and a nerd, so I just had the time to do it. Uh, if you go to Facebook, there's a Facebook page called Old Bridge Voice. You can go there, you can send a message. I'll collate those, I'll collect those. And there is a voicemail box that I have set up as well uh, at 732-440-8011. It'll record a voicemail, it'll transcribe it, I'll get an email. So I'll collect those, I'll come to the council meetings, and I'll, uh, I'll be an, it'll be an honor to speak uh, on behalf of the, uh, those who can't come out and speak for themselves, so thank you. Uh, council President? Yes. Can I speak well, to him? Not sure. Yeah. Okay, sure, I just wanna address, hi Paul. <laughs> I think we were corresponding via email, right? Okay, good to see you. Uh, can you just repeat that phone number? Was it a phone number, 732-440? And that's Old Bridge Voice on Facebook, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Alan Gorski. Yes. 
Good evening. Good evening. My name is Alan Gorski. I'm the attorney for the Commons at Old Bridge Condominium Association. We were here for the first reading of the uh, resolution about dedicating the roads back to the township. Okay. That's really yep. all, that, all that I have. At the yeah, moment. that's fine. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Joseph Velez, I believe. Yes. Oh. He's the president of the board. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good evening. Um, we're really happy uh, at our uh, homeowners association and uh, devel development that the uh, the town council will be uh, promptly addressing this issue for us. Um, our roads are uh, in repair, and we wanted to go ahead with this kind of uh, progress uh, with your approval, so that we could have a lender look at uh, a document that would uh, allow us to uh, move more forward and uh, dedicate our roads um, to town. Um, thanks to the help of uh, the, uh, the Nicole Andrea. and others here. And um, again, thank you for the time. But we are, we're really looking forward to it, uh, our 90 homes. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Anyone okay. else? No, that's it. On the okay, public seeing that the public portion is concluded, I will now go to council member comments. I will start here. Mr. Merwin, do you have any? Yeah. No, I'm going to pass. Okay. No. Anyone else? Mr. Cahill, anyone have comments? Mrs. Walker? Yes, I just want the people at home to know that uh, there's a new program this year for veterans. They get a $3,000 tax exemption, and it's open to all veterans who are honorably, dis honorably discharged from the United States Armed Forces, regardless of their income status. So whoever's filling out your taxes, you should check into that. I just want people aware in case they're, they don't know. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Anyone else have a comment? Mr. Murphy? Um, yes, this is uh, in response to uh, Mrs. Cannon, Mayor Cannon. I agree, you know, you have an alliance to him, you hired him, and nobody said he wasn't doing the financial job better than anybody could possibly do it, and I agree with you. But politically, that's what was done tonight. It was politics tonight. They got somebody to change their vote, and it was technically politics. I explained to the party when I joined them, I am not a Republican, I am not a Democrat, I'm here for the people. It feels like I'm the only one on this side right now that's here for the people, and I will stay that way. I just want to let everybody know. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else Ma comment? Madam Chairperson. Yes. Before we get into any other, I, could the administration give me a status on the uh, Lawrence Harbor Senior Building? Since Ms. Walker uh, mentioned the, the veteran status thing, I know that was earmarked for um, veteran housing. What's happening with that? Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, first of all, um, I want to thank council for their support in selection of business administrator. Um, uh, and, and I appreciate you know, comments by uh, Mayor Cannon. Appreciate that and, and also the council member who had positively, you know, supported me. And I do appreciate uh, uh, Councilman Paschetti for your support. Um, Lawrence Harbor Senior Center building has been uh, slated under the our redevelopment agencies for the redevelopment uh, process for about 12 uh, uh, affordable housing. And we were trying to do uh, with the preference for the veterans housing. Uh, we had a contractor with the Habitat for Humanity uh, to build those housing, but unfortunately, uh, after several attempts, uh, the fund, they could not put the funding together. And so uh, this year, I think earlier this year, we ultimately terminated an agreement with the uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity. We're looking at another other uh, contractor who would be providing the the you know be able to provide the uh, affordable housing in in the units. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, 
because of the, the number of units required that's agreed under the COA uh, agreement uh, and the limited space. And the idea was, uh, you know, before the habitat plan was to build uh, uh, the condo units and, and we're looking at the single family. So we're, we're looking at different options right now uh, to proceed with the uh, building of uh, senior affordable housing there. Yeah, uh, Nicole can give yeah. me further update. Can I do it, please? Thank you. Um, again, with respect to, the, I can handle Ms. Mayor. Um, with respect to the, uh, if you remember, as part of our plan, we included that provision because it's a municipally sponsored project. Um, while, again, um, there was a veteran's preference because you couldn't restrict it to just veterans. Uh, and the redevelopment agency had de designated Habitat as a redeveloper. Um, there was, again, as Mr. Shaw had mentioned, some issues with respect to their funding. However, I did have a telephone call with, they have a new executive director, an old executive director, where it's just to keep the township's op options open. Uh, they're exploring the possibility of, of trying to come up with additional funds uh, to, to complete their project. That being said, and knowing um, the issues we were having or issues associated with Habitat, we're trying to enlist potentially other developers who could come in and again, fulfill the requirement. Um, it's still, uh, the, the goal is to have 12 units there, uh, whether they're gonna be detached single family, which are permitted under the uh, plan, or the condominiums, which again, were, were also permitted. So it's still moving forward, uh, Mr. Merwin. Uh, again, under the, under the, uh, the, uh, the uh, settlement that was approved by the court, uh, towns have um, a, a certain number of years before uh, you know, they have to report back as to the progress. And uh, statutorily, that's uh, two years, so we're still within that period. Uh, but again, um, we're working with all um, potential developers to, to make that uh, a reality because, again, we believe that's a, a good site. Uh, and, um, you know, it just, it's not always easy to find a uh, developer in that realm because, you know, they're limited why? financial ability. And I'm new here, so. That's right. Why can we not make veterans preference? There is no federal program in this country. You, no, we can do vet, we, veterans. We, we can do preference. veterans preference, but we can't just restrict it under affordability. Right. The affordability laws in the state of New Jersey under the COA. Correct, right, right, right. right. Um, but we can we can have uh, a veterans preference, but we can't just restrict it to veterans because it's designated as affordable housing. Do we get credit for all twelve in yeah. COA, or is it something? No, that all, we tw could... all twelve are, are identified as affordable housing. We couldn't come up with trolls somewhere else and just make that a veterans housing and, and, and move this thing along. I mean, it's well, I mean, that's it's not <clears throat> it's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, anything that we would do that uh, changes the plan, depending on what it is, may require an amendment. Um, but again, I think the idea is and always was even as part of the plan was to have a veterans preference. It doesn't mean that we have another municipally sponsored project. Uh, that uh, would include, which also is slated to include veterans' preferences as well. So that's the one on, um, what's that site? It's not Crossroads, it's across, no, it's, uh, what's the other site, mystery sponsored site we have? Oh, yeah, right. And that's another area which, again, that, that, has, that will have some veterans' preference as well. And that's a much larger development. How about getting it knocked down? The, I mean, it's a nice it's, it's Well, that's something that, uh, as part of our discussion with um, uh, Habitat, that w something that we'd be willing to do um, for any potential developer, because obviously that helps them, uh, because they'll be coming up with the ability, to, you know, to to uh, to construct. So I think that's something that the township, in their discussions, would be willing to undertake. Yeah, we were going to. Our contribution was going to be the land and the removal of the building. I, I'm just I'm I, I am just shocked <laughs> that there is no program that we can get money for to build veterans housing. I, it's well, fortunately, Mr. Merwin, the, the veteran housing uh, need has been met in Middlesex County. When you talk to the county, their need has been met. So if they're those programs are not, but they're just not viable at this time. Okay. And also, uh, it was for veterans first, and then also displaced Sandy. 
of families were going to be given preference at that location also. Okay, thank but you. I believe the you know if you talk to people at the county, the the veterans are, are, are they've made tremendous uh, strides in Middlesex County. Anyone else with council comments? Report of the township clerk. None at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Report of the township. I'm not attorney. thinking of a report this time, Mr. Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Administrative report. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the administrative report for March uh, 5th, 2018. Item 1, 2018 municipal and capital budget. The township council has scheduled council budget subcommittee meetings for March 7. March 14 and March 21st to review the proposed budget in more detail. The formal presentation and a public hearing on the 2018 municipal and capital budgets are now scheduled for April 9, 2018 mm -hmm. council meeting. I just want to alert council that it looks like uh, Wednesday, March 7, we might have a snow and we may uh, reschedule that meeting on uh, March 28, uh, Wednesday, March 28. Uh, that's the plan, and I will um, send you updates tomorrow on that. Uh, item number two, Jersey Center Power and Light, First Energy 24-7 Power Center. Old Bridge customer who lost power during a winter storm nor'easter event should call JCPNL directly at 188-LIGHTS, 1-888-544-4877 to report the outage. For updated information on power outage service issue, storm restoration, or important safety tips, residents should also visit JCPNL First Energy 24-7 Power Center at firstenergy.com. Item number three, 2017 Middlesex County proposed resurfacing program. On February 23, 2018, the township received notification from the Middlesex County Department of Infrastructure Management that the following roadway are projected to be milled and paved this year. Route 516 from Route 18 uh, to Ridge Road, Old Bridge Madawan Road from Route 9 overpass to Cottrell Road, uh, Marlboro Road from Charles Street to Second Streets, Armstrong Road from Rutgers Road to County Line and Texas Road uh, from Route 9 to Sardine Road. Hard copies of the March 2, 2070 letter from Middlesex County uh, Director of Public Works have been forwarded to the Township Clerk's Office for distribution to Council. Item number four, United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Region 2, Raritan Bay Sludge, Sledge Superfund Site. EPA is currently conducting a remediation action plan in the Margaret Creek sector of Raritan Bay Sledge Superfund Site. Excavation activities have been completed with the exceptions of one remaining area. Overall, the estimated area for excavation was significantly reduced, resulting in much smaller area for disturbance. Restoration activi activities will begin in spring of 2018 once the weather permits. Remedial activities in Margaret Creeks could be completed as soon as late spring, February 2018. EPA approved the work plan to begin remedial design for Sewell Saxon for Raritan Bay Sledge Superfund site. A pre-designed sampling work plan is currently being drafted. Once approved, sampling can begin in the sector to collect current data for preparation of remedial uh, design report. Uh, 2017 Annual Curb Replacement Program Contract Number 2017-34. The Township of Old Bridge is remobilizing the, its contractor launch track construction to complete the 2017 annual curb replacement contract. The contractor will resume work beginning on or about Monday, March 5, 2018, which is today, which will include replacement of curbs, installation of under drains, and construction replacement of sidewalk ramps to comply with the ADA requirements. Work will occur on the following roads. Belmont Avenue, Ward 6, Concord Drive, Ward 5, Symbol Line Drive, Ward 4, Fernwood Place, Ward 4, Pensacola Street, Ward 5, Teton Place, Ward 5, and minor works in vicinity of 10, Mariposa Place, and number 7, Duke Court, Ward 3. Number 6, Community op Option Adult Day Program. 
Community Options and Adult Day Program for People with Disability has signed an agreement with the township and will open a center here in Old Bridge. On March 13 at 7 p.m. in the municipal courtroom, residents will have the opportunity to meet with them and ask questions about specific needs. For additional information, residents should contact Matt Mercurio, Director of Parks and Recreation and Social Services at 732-721-5600 extension 7913. Item number seven, Old Bridge Municipal Alliance. On March 26, 2018 at 7 p.m., there will be a community hospital symposium on opiate crisis at the Auxiliary Hall in the Medical Art Building, lower level, Redden Bay Medical Center, which is at 3 Hospital Plaza in Old Bridge. The keynote speaker, Dr. Solka, Chairman of Psychiatrists at Jersey Shore University Medical Center, Corporate Medical Director for Behavioral Health and Meridian Health, and Founding Chairman of Department of Psychiatrics at the Seton Hall Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine. Dr. Sol Haka is a board certified in addiction psychiatry as well as a child's psychiatry and is nationally known expert in opiate crisis. For additional information, residents should contact Karen Totrisi, Program Coordinator, Old Bridge Municipal Alliance at 732-721-5600, extension 4022, or email kstortor at oldbridge.com. Uh, number eight, winter storm advisory. Friday's storm was driven, diverse event uh, with flooding, fallen trees, and snow. DPW requires 67 hours of overtime responding to five fallen trees, flooding on East Greystone Road and portion of a roadway requiring salting. Throughout the storm, DP DPW continuously check township drainage for blockage. DPW will continue to monitor potential storm for later this week. Item number nine, recycling. Recycling bins are now available at the Recycling Center on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. in addition to being available in the office Monday through Friday. They are, they are $1.10 each, cash or checks only. New residents must show closing papers on their deed reflecting the house was purchased within one year to obtain two free bins. Please see the recycling attendant at the booth for details. Item number 10, spring curbside leap collection. The Department of Public Works is scheduled to begin the first round of leap collection on April 9, 2018. All leaves should be placed at the curb the Sunday night before the bio, in biodegradable paper bags. Winter storm emergency will take priority over the collection of leaves. For additional information, residents should contact the Department of Public Works at 732 721-5600 extension 6140 or visit township website at oldbridge.com. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. I'd like a motion now to accept the administrative report, please. I'll move it. Second. Okay, moved by Mrs. Walker. Second. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? No. Mr. Murphy? No. Mr. Piscetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? No. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Sohar? Yes. Six yes, three no. Madam Chairperson? Yes, Mr. Merwin. I did not vote no because I didn't vote for Mr. Shaw. I voted no because I have no idea why we vote for to approve the administrative report. Exactly he just spent 15 minutes reading it. Why have we got to vote on it? I agree. Why do we have to? I think that was explained two times already. All right. Mr. Rizzo? Uh, again, I think it's, it's a matter of uh, a way that these are activities that, are, that the administration uh, undertake, which council may not obviously be aware of. So to the extent that it's part of the council meeting, I think it's, it's to affirmation by the council that they've received the information so it becomes part of the overall meeting and uh, so historically they'll know that that information was shared and provided not only to council but the residents too and I think initially when that started it was a it was a way to get out additional information to the residents of the township so I think from from a procedural perspective 
uh, it's a way to include it as part of the overall record you know, for, for historical purposes. Thank you very much. Next will be our consent agenda. Do we have a motion for the consent agenda? Okay. Any separations? Yeah. Yes, I'd like to separate. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to separate, so same. Okay, yeah. so one and two are separated? Yes. All righty, and does anyone from the public have any concerns? Seeing no hands, I will close it to the public. And we will now go with C1, Mrs. Brown? That's Mr. Merwin. Oh, Mr. Merwin, I'm sorry, Mr. Merwin. Yes, uh, again, uh, I, mean, I need a motion for C1. I'm sorry. It's a uh, increase from, I don't know what the percentage is, $1,900, $2,000. Can you explain that? Uh, I'll Nicole, explain that. Councilman Merwin, it's probably representative of about 4% um, of the total not to exceed number. Um, it, it's really um, a starting base that we use per year um, based on complaints, uh, permitting, um, activities on the Shade Tree Commission, um, anything that, that is not escrow base for a developer that's really township business. Our um, conservation officer, Gary Lavallo, um, he basically takes care of those items along with his staff, um, and in 2017, um, probably the last month and a half had attributed to the $1,900, and so we're asking that council then approve um, the increase. Uh, I knew, I just want the public to be aware of why it went up, that's all, thank you. Okay, so do we have a motion for C1? I'll move it. Merlin and Dr. Greenberg. <coughs> Roll call. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. And Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Piscetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Sohar? Yes. Nine yes. And next is C2, authorizing an agreement between Old Bridge Township and the Commons at Old Bridge a.k.a. Efert Estates, for public acceptance of the private roadways, which include Homestead Drive, Candlewood Court, Fireside Court, North and South, Denton Court, North and South, Cable Court, North and South, and Hale Court, North and South, after completed roadway improvements by the HOA. Okay, so I just had a question for Ms. Shapiro again. Hi. So uh, I asked last week, too, for the original builder's agreement between the township and the builder. So, so this is the second um, agreement that they were kind of change for the development through the HOA? Oh, um, uh, you're asking for the specific agreement. Right, the, the, the original one. So when the property was built, there was an agreement between the builder and also the township. Well, not necessarily, no, because wasn't. it was so old. Or the HOA, rather. Right, uh, I'm sorry. The, you're, you're talking about a developer's agreement? Yeah, yeah, the builder's agreement. The builder's yeah. agreement. Yeah. So the developer's agreement, based on this project years ago, right. there probably wasn't one. Um, there was a res They usually just went with a detailed resolution of approval. It's only in recent years, especially with our township attorney, that he makes us go out and do a developer's agreement. Right. And usually when there's um, a residential and commercial component, so we tie the commercial to the residential CEOs or... or you know, Right? Am I am I saying this correctly? Um, so so there's like a, a sort of phasing. So the developers agreement is sort of phasing of a development that usually has a, a residential and a commercial component. In this case, since it was all commercial, uh, since it was all residential, there was no developers agreement. Or you could say that there wasn't because back um, at the at the time that this um, development was being built, whether it was residential or commercial, there weren't many developers agreement done back then. So okay. they would go by the resolu resolution of approval. So there's no actual formal formal agreement between the builder and the HOA and their responsibility. Their formal agreement is their HOA documents. Now I could okay. probably dig in yeah, my that would be great if I in, in that, my yeah. files, but chances are that developer's agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, that HOA document is in the hands of the HOA and not the engineering department because it's okay. the, the HOA's agreement with the, the developer 
and the HOA who had basically okay. so spelled out that. All right, maybe I could work to get that somehow. I'm just curious because this is the second one that was presented where they're ta transferring the responsibility to the town yes. as opposed to the HOA. So I'm just curious to yes, see Yes, I could is. ask them to okay. provide. No problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And does anyone else have comments? Yeah, Mr. Murphy. Is there any cost to the town for these roadway improvements? No, the, the resolution. This is the one that's going to take care of themselves? Right. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? Go ahead. Yes. I can't open up the first document. I'm having a, an error, but okay. what was the cost to the, um, to the HOA on uh, bringing the roads up to speed? Well, when, when I came up with the estimate, and that's using our prevailing wage, I came up with something about 386000 I, okay. I have it in my backup documents, but I... I, I had it, it before. I can open up now. It's okay. Yeah. I'll take Ms. Shapiro's... Uh, <laughs> if I could, um, Ms. Cahill, according to... Ms. Shapiro's memo, it's approximately $347,210.21. Okay. So that, that would have to be completed before we take over Correct. the roads. Yes. What's important is that the HOA has to go to the bank to get the financing. Right. Our resolution tonight, should, should the council accept it, um, would give them the ability to go to the bank and say, hey, the council said that they would accept our roadways. Should we do these improvements? Right. Give us the loan. Let us do it. And, and then go from there. So the bank would want to see that approval before that they right. Right. got it. As, as Makes sense. As opposed to a special assessment to the homeowners. Thank you. Hey, I'll just send the comments. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, uh, I, I just want to verify we have Title 39 in here, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I will close the comments by saying that um, I am supporting this. I think that they have come a long way in, in trying to get this situation resolved and to get the roads taken over. And I really do appreciate all the time and effort on the part of Mrs. Shapiro, the, our, our attorney, Mr. Roselli, Mr. Shaw, in trying to bring everyone together to get this accomplished. So I definitely will be supporting it. In fact, I'd like to make the motion. And would someone like to second, second. it? Second. Mrs. Brown? Abstain. Excuse me? Abstain. Abstain. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Vaschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Eight yes, one abstention. Thank you, gentlemen. Next will be ordinance for first reading. FR1, an ordinance of the Township of Old Bridge amending Chapter 5-101, Special Law Enforcement Officers Class 3 of the Code of the Township of Old Bridge. Move it. Move it. Okay. Second. Moved by Mr. Merwin, second by Dr. Greenberg Belli. <coughs> Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. And Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Piscetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Nine yes. Next is public comments on any subject matter. Come forward, please. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Council and Council President. Uh, my name is Junior Romero. I'm with an organization called Food and Water Watch. Uh, we're based out of New Brunswick, 100 Bayard Street. Uh, my subject today is on the Northeast Supply Enhancement Project. Uh, it's got various names, the Raritan Bay Pipeline, the uh, Central Jersey Gas Compressor. Um, all of this is one project. Uh, basically, uh, Williams Transcontinental is a pipeline company. They're based out of Texas, and they are, um, they're they're currently through filing phase with uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which is the federal body that approves or disapproves these projects. Um, it's 23 miles of pipeline from the Raritan, from the, through the Raritan Bay into Rockaway, New, uh, New York. Uh, the point would be Lawrence Harbor, um, and then there would be about 3.2 3 miles of uh, pipeline, 26-inch diameter pipeline, uh, through uh, Old Bridge and Sayreville. 
uh, the most affected communities are probably the Madison Park area, um, and then uh, the pipeline point also would hit uh, very close to the, the park, the Old Bridge Park you have on, on the Bayshore. Uh, and then the other part is a gas compressor engine. Basically, it's what uh, you have to build a compressor to gas every 10 miles or so uh, that the pipeline route goes through. And this pipeline route uh, goes from Pennsylvania all the way to here. Um, so all that to say is uh, we we were opposed to this project um, in central New Jersey around the gas compressor engine, Franklin Township, um, uh, South Brunswick Township, and Princeton Township have all passed resolutions opposing this, this project, Northeast Supply Enhancement. There's an interstate coalition of New York groups, New Jersey groups, environmental, residential, citizens advocacy groups opposed to this project in its entirety. We're not just focusing on the pipeline, we're, we're not just focusing on the compressor, we're focusing on the whole thing. Uh, 2,000 comments were made to FERC opposing this project back in April during the first comment period. Uh, it's one of the, the most commented uh, projects ever uh, in, New Jer in, in New Jersey's history, at least. And uh, it just shows the, the strong opposition to, to, to this proposal. Um, uh, marine life could be endangered with this pipeline. Uh, Williams Transcontinental does not have a great safety record. Um, <coughs> Our concerns, our environmental concerns, obviously gas is a contributor to, to climate change, uh, but uh, the, the marine life uh, is also a big concern. We've worked with New York, New Jersey Baykeeper, who is opposed to this project. Some of you all are probably familiar with that organization. Um, so they've worked with Keyport and the Bayshore area a lot. Um, so, uh, and then Hazlitt's Environmental Commission has also passed a resolution opposing this project. Uh, I wanted to approach the council this time. I came to one of the council meetings last, uh, during the previous council. Uh, last year, and um, we're about to hit. This is this is the year where this project's either going to be approved or disapproved. Um, uh, April, we're probably going to see what's called a draft environmental impact statement come out, and then there's going to be another comment period. We want to get more than 2,000 comments in because uh, we're that opposed to this project. Uh, but what we haven't seen is is enough opposition on this uh, on this side on the pipeline part. There's been a lot of people opposed to the compressor. Um, and, and I'm familiar, Sayreville has a compressor uh, here. I'm not sure if many of y'all are familiar with a compressor, but uh, benzene, uh, carcinogens uh, are, are, are spewed from a compressor engine. Um, some run 24 hours a day, uh, some are gas powered, some are electric powered, but all, all, of, them, all of this put the, these chemicals in the air. And if you're gonna build more pipeline, that means there's gonna be more gas. If there's gonna be more gas, you're gonna need more compressor power. So the compressor engine in Sayreville is affecting the air of, 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 of a few mile radius, which includes Old Bridge. Um, so if this pipeline is approved, even if uh, you're not, um, you're not uh, against the pipeline aspect of it, you're gonna have more gas coming to that compressor, therefore more pollution um, to the areas. Uh, that comes with health concerns, carcinogens, cause cancer. Uh, just, just a whole swath of concerns of why we're opposed to this project. And um, we are seeking the township's partnership. Uh, you can intervene as a township uh, or even as individuals. Uh, over a thousand people signed up as interveners. It just shows that uh, you have a stake in the matter. Middlesex County, uh, the whole county of Middlesex County is signed up to intervene with FERC. It doesn't necessarily mean you're against or, uh, or for a project, but it just you get regular information and uh, you just have a stake in the project. Um, and uh, if uh, I'm glad to meet with any uh, of the council members uh, privately as well, uh, if you'd like, to talk more about this project. Um, we want to plan an educational forum with the uh, Madison Park folks. Um, uh, I invite everyone there, and um, yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for coming. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to be heard? Forward, please. Good evening. Good evening. Brian Murphy, 40 Bushnell Road. Now, do we get to speak with more on uh, more than one issue? Not. It hasn't been memorialized yet? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, now I can? It's coming. Okay. It's coming. All right. I promise. Well, can I just say something about the officers who were promoted tonight without stepping on my issue? Can I do that? Yeah, you can do I, a quick. I want to congratulate Captain Grumpet and Lieutenant Lepresti. Um, 
I don't know Captain Grumpet, but I've known Pete Lepresti for over 40 years, and he is a huge asset to this town. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Now my issue. First of all, I want to preface this by saying um, congratulations on your appointment, Mr. Shah. I'm sure you'll do a fine job. Um, I'm sure Mayor Cannon and Mayor Henry and everyone else for the last two weeks, whatever they said about you and all your accolades, I'm sure are true. I actually think, why yet another business, business administrator for the next year and a half? That's not my concern. My concern is the way this was handled. I am embarrassed sitting here tonight, absolutely embarrassed at this council the way this was handled. Even if it went the other way, if you were voted no last week, or you were or voted yes last week and no this week, I'd still have the same concerns. My concern is Mr. Paschetti's change of vote. You are a representative of this town. How does that happen? First of all, I saw this on the agenda before I came, and I didn't understand what it meant until I sat in here, and I saw what it meant. How does that happen? Where after seven days, Mr. Merwin had the perfect word. You had an epiphany to change your vote. I don't get it. You knew this was coming for months. You must have done your research. I heard you last week, and I believed you. You didn't call him a criminal. You said in the future it could happen. But let's go back two months before you were a councilman. You stood here and twice called him a bean counter. Councilwoman Greenberg last week, you said you hoped this wasn't political. Well, I don't really know what you meant by that because half of your votes came from here and half of your votes came from here. So I don't know what you meant by political. What was political was a change of vote in seven days. And like I said, if it went the other way, I would be up here saying the same thing. I am embarrassed to be a resident of Oldbridge after hearing that you changed a vote in seven days. Something's happened. To me, that's a little fishy. I think you owe the residents of Oldbridge and this council an explanation on why you changed that vote. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to be heard? Um, wait one second. Can I, Mr. Millett, Millet, can I do the young lady and then you, sir? Okay. Good. Hi, Veronica Jameson. Hi, actually, my husband was just up here, but he, he mentioned a few things because we had another girl that was supposed to take the lead and she had to leave. So basically, also, with everything he was saying, there's also the fact that, again, he didn't mention it, about the four dead cats that were on the beach within the month. That was uh, last February, last March. So we didn't really issue or, you know, mention cameras at the time because we figured, you know, okay, that this is it. Then the TNR was passed, so we figured we would all be, you know, fine. But it wasn't. But also for the cameras, it's not really, again, about the cats on the beach. I mean, we want them to be safe, but we're being... Well, I don't know if you want to say illegal dumping or I don't know what you would call it, but we're finding kittens left on the beach in carrier cases. Now, that's not legal to do. And again, if it wasn't for Happy Homes Rescue, not only do they have the burden, but all the other cats, they're taking cats from, we don't know where they're coming from. So like I said, and again, this is the other a friend of ours that does the TNR, she's a little bit more outspoken, louder, but she, but she had to leave. But anyway, so that was the other two key things, I believe, that would eliminate. And then... We're saying we're littering. I mean, at this point, we are littering. They took our bins. They broke them up. So we are putting them not on the ground. We're putting them in their little dishes under the boardwalk. But like I said, if they didn't destroy all our stuff three times in one month, destroyed. So I mean, and then again, they must have had complaints about we're feeding on the jetty. And there says no feeding on the jetty. We had to put the food on the jetty to get the cat on the jetty to go under the box trap to get her, which we did. So, I mean, I don't really have no answer what to do down there. And again, like my husband said, there was 
40, 30 kittens and 10 adult cats that were adopted out. Well, three of them I have because you can't touch them. But they're off the beach. They're not in no one's way. And they're starting to, they're starting to come around now. So this one from Reti in our program to basically a rescue program. And that wasn't supposed to be the point here. They were supposed to be safe on the beach and live happy. So, I mean, like I said, I know you guys are not supposed to put money into this, but we put thousands of dollars into this, thousands. So if we could just get one little camera, even if we could do it ourselves, get the okay. I'm fine with that. But like I said, we can't do it until we have an okay to do it because we don't want to you know, be in trouble either. So again, like I said, if you let us do it, I'm good with it. If you guys could do it, however, however it works. So I appreciate that. So <laughs> that's what's really it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We'll get back to you. Can you hear me? Yes. I okay, good. Thank you. Because I uh, just lost my hearing aids. Oh, okay. Uh, I have to put my hat on for this. And I'm going to comment on what Mr. Merwin said about veterans housing. The senior center in Old Bridge is filled with mold. Uh, the senior center that was on Lawrence Parkway is filled with mold and asbestos. The likelihood of being able to redevelop that in its standing position is not very good. But you have thousands of apartments that are being built currently. You can decide to add some COA housing to meet your requirements with that, with those buildings. I don't understand why it can't be added. Uh, ordinances were changed. Planning board should be able to make a decision on that. Now, as for veterans housing, <clears throat> uh, just a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I had helped a guy who was living in his car. He had been thrown out of his Section 8 housing because he could no longer afford it. He was a disabled veteran with about a 60% uh, post-traumatic stress disorder rating. And he was living with his brother-in-law who didn't want him to continue to live there anymore, so he was out on his own. I got friends up in Bergen County to find him housing because I knew that Bergen County had applied for and was expecting to get a $6 million grant to help with veterans housing. Unfortunately, that $6 million grant was part of a Department of Veterans Affairs budgetary amount of $600 million in the fiscal year 2018 budget. That was put on, that was frozen by Director Shulkin. Shulkin, now in the 2019 fiscal budget, it was eliminated. So we're not doing a heck of a lot to help our veterans. If we can get some money from Middlesex County, and I can talk to a number of people who have ideas on that, and I've already talked to a number of people about that, because as I said, we, we uh, were looking for housing for this guy who was thrown out of his brother-in-law's house and was living in his car. I also met in, a bur in the Burger King on Route 36, a veteran who was living in his car. I gave him my card, and a couple of weeks later, I was able to refer him to Sheriff Millie Scott, who would take him through the steps to find housing here in Middlesex County. So it's here. It's there. It's available. Variable, available. Every single day when you walk here and you sit in this room, you pass scores of young guys and girls who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. If they're anything like the average citizens that served in my war, they're gonna start facing what I call paying the dues for those experiences. What are you going to do when they start feeling I can't go out anymore. I can't earn a job anymore. 
I've lost two legs and now my employer says I'm not qualified for the job. You have to give a higher priority. The money is there and you just have to do more to look for it. Thank you. Is there any well, anyone else in the public who would like to be heard? If not, I will now close the public portion. We're going to do the licenses at the end. You can speak public council comments, okay? All right. Next is, um, Next is our liquor license, LL1, renewing plenary retail consumption license number 1209-33-030. Dash 003 R. Flynn Enterprises Incorporated, T.A. Kegan Cork, inactive. Mrs. Ward. Okay. Okay, that LL1 is the um, old Kegan Cork. Right. That's last year's liquor license, 2017 to, th to June of 2018. We were waiting for paperwork from the state received it, and now I'm putting it on for a renewal. The license is inactive at the moment and probably will be inactive for a little while, yeah. and I need a vote. They have everything intact now. I just need to have a resolution. Does anyone it's have? A, I'm any? sorry. It's just a clear up of paperwork, actually. Okay. So did anyone have any comments from the council? Yes. Sir. Um so we're, this looking to open up again? No. No, no it's going to remain inactive for a while. You just, They're still going through keep the legal license? documents. Okay. Yes. You're just renewing the license. Yes. On both of these? Yes. Okay. We're going to do mm -hmm. them individually. Okay, Mr. Murphy? Yep. All right. So do we have a motion? Motion. Thank you. Second. Okay. Second by Dr. Greenberg. Motion by Mr. Rizzo. Thanks. Okay. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Kale? Yes. And Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Veskitty? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Next is LL2, Renewing Plenary Retail Consumption License Number 1209-330. 25-008, Oldbridge Entertainment Associates Incorporated, inactive. Okay. Um, this license is the old bash. Oldbridge Entertainment Associates purchased the license. Um, as you know, the place is still closed. Mm -hmm. um, they received a special ruling from the ABC because they've been inactive for over two years and it's still inactive. I just need to renew the license in good standing so when they do get an owner, there will be a liquor license. All right, does anyone else have any questions? I'll take a motion. I'll move it, it's inactive. Second. Yes, it's inactive. Thank you, all right. Okay. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yep. Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Peschetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Sohar? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next are discussion items. The first one is D1, an ordinance prohibiting council members from being appointed to the OBMUA as a commissioner. This would apply to any new appointments. Those council members that are currently appointed to the MUA now would remain until their current appointment ends. Mr. Merwin? Um, I'm calling for this ordinance because there's absolutely no reason that a council member should even be sitting on this. There are conflicts between a sitting council and the, uh, the MUA commissioners, um, and there's just no reason. If, if somebody thinks that there's a need for having a liaison, I'm more than willing to put a liaison in place. But uh, there, there is no reason for sitting council members, because I've been at council members where people have got up and asked about their water rates or their sewer rates, and they were told that this is not the meeting to be asking that. Well, if we're going to be sitting on it, maybe it is the place to be asking those questions. So to remove that, we should not be having any 
council members sitting as commissioners on the OBMUA. And that's it in a nutshell. Are any other uh, council comments? Mrs. Dr. Greenberg? Okay. Yes, I'll have to make a comment about that because um, I think it's a little absurd that you're bringing this up and I'll use one of your words you said before, I think an epiphany. Are you having an epiphany? Because you sat on that board, Mr. Merwin, and while you were on that board, you sat there with council members. You sat there with Mr. Testino, and, Mr. D and um, I don't understand, you know, what now is the epiphany about this. Um, so basically, I'll go back on the history of there just to, and like I said, I always like to deal with facts. So you were a commissioner in 2004. You sat with a council member. You were a council member in 2003. You sat with a council member. In 2005, you sat with a council member. In 2006, you sat with a council member. In 2007, so I don't know why you're bringing this up now. Um, but I will say that, so you were a commissioner from 2003 to 2009, and you always sat with a council member. And so then I'll also go further, that when you were on there, you received a stipend of $1,500, and you worked in the town. Also, while you worked in the town, you received health, dental, and vision benefits from the MB M M UA simultaneously while you were receiving them from the town. Then I'll go over the rate increases. In 2003, you were absent from the vote. In 2004, you voted yes. In 2005, you voted yes. 2006, you were absent from the vote. Um, 2007, you voted yes. In 2008, you, um, you were absent. I serve on that board, and I've served on other boards in this town, and I make it a point to serve it with honor and integrity and to be informed and take classes. And I'll tell you, I sit on that board. I do not take a stipend. I do not take health benefits. And I try to highlight the positive things that people understand about the MUA and what the function the MUA has in this town and how it works, and the workers that work very hard in inclement weather, whether it's extreme heat, whether extreme um, freezing temperatures, when our infrastructure, because of the weather and the aging infrastructure fails, they're out there working. I think it is amazing what they do um, for that. But I will also bring in one more thing when you talk about council members on the um, MUA. You're right. There's a sum you probably might have to look out for. I don't know. Um, I take that on an individual basis. I look at everyone else as an individual basis. But if you're bringing it up now while I'm sitting on that board, I have a right to say something about it. But I will bring you up something to you in the prior administration that th this administration and we put an end to. And I will bring it up. And it, re it got a letter from the Division of Local Government, and it was Tom Neff at the time, in 2011. And I'll tell you, it was talking about, it has come to my attention that the induced budget and that was um, in 2000, dear Mayor Phillips and members of the Township Council, 2007-11, anyone could look up at the members who were on that council at that time and the people who have voted for this. It has come to my attention that the introduced budget, soon to be the subject of a public hearing by the Council of the Township of Oldbridge, contains the use of large amounts of non-recurring revenues that were created create a severe structural budget problem in the next year's budget. In particular, the proposed budget utilizes $5.3 million from a one-time sale of land to the Old Bridge Municipal Utility Authority. Additionally, the proposed budget includes the use of $1.3 million of surplus from the authority, while surplus is rapidly depleted. Because that $1.3 million was not taken once from that council, 
from the MUA. It was taken twice. And the same people that were on the council voted to sell that land and to buy that land. So I say to you, it is about the individual. And that is what you look at, the caliber of the individual, the character of the individual, and the individual to make the right choices for the members of the town. So I will say to you that that warranted. So I'm glad you had an epiphany, but do not include me into that epiphany. I serve with honor, and I would never do that. So let's not play games here. I can do both quite well, and I think I have done well, and my record speaks for itself. Thank you, and if there's something else that comes up, I am happy to answer that. Okay. Now, is there any other council comments? Mrs. Walker. Yes, I sat in this council chamber for many years before I ran for election, and I witnessed what was going on in the town, and I sat here while council members voted to buy on one at the council level and at the MUA, I would also go to all the MUA meetings as well to buy and sell the same land. I didn't see Mr. Merwin yelling and screaming that it wasn't right. I was at the meetings. I never once heard him, saw him come and yell and scream, say it was wrong. And the money was being used as a one-shot revenue to pay payroll. So I don't understand why everything, I'm very, very sad sitting up here because I thought that when the council, this was gonna be a nice year, but it seems like it's all turning political. And I think that, I mean, I'm here to represent the people. I don't vote along party lines all the time. I vote what's right, what I feel is right, what's right for the people. And I'm just getting tired of all this political posturing up here. Now, any other council comments? Anyone on this side? How about over here, council comments? No. Okay, then I will make my comments as well. And I do feel that this really, um, this evening is troubling. I think that, you know, depending upon who's here, who the person is and how, what kind of a job they do should make a difference. I don't think it necessarily has to weigh in whether you're council, you're not council. Um, I agree, the selling and the buying of the land was here when I was a council member. I did not vote for it, but there were people on both sides. And as Mrs. Walker said, there was many times when people could have come and could have explained how they felt about this and never did. Um, you listen to the, you know, to the record rate increases. They do, they do come about, unfortunately. And as you see, it's not one side of the equation that always voted for rate increases. So I think tonight is just, again, something that is being brought up for strictly political purposes. Anyone else? All right. Well, at this point... Um, I will move it for a vote to um, to ask the attorney to to, to draft the uh, ordinance. Yeah, right. basically just to, to remind everybody, uh, we, we've been back and forth in this. Um, we under our code section 525B. Um, obviously, uh, before council, uh, if someone if one individual council member has a uh, a discussion item that they want to um, turn into a an ordinance or a resolution. Uh, the code requires that there be a motion um, basically uh, authorizing that so the Department of Law can draft the ordinance resolution. So, um, and we've done that in the past. So to the extent, again, I think the, the first thing is is that a member of, uh, of the council has a discussion item and, and certainly then that if they want to uh, move it to uh, allow for the drafting in this instance would be an ordinance is permitted on the, under uh, section 525B. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Is there a second? I moved it. Oh, did you move it? All right. All right. So then do you want to second it, Mark? Okay. Second by Councilman Mitzoli. Okay. Mrs. Brown? Abstain. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? No. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Pass. Mr. Beschetti? No. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? No. Mr. Murphy? No. President Sohar? No. Three yes. 
Five no, one abstention. Thank you. Next is discussion item number two, an ordinance which would eliminate council members from receiving health benefits. Mr. Rizzoli. Thank you. Um, Councilor, I have a question for you. Uh, we spoke in uh, length about this. Um, you weren't able to locate a resolution or ordinance that authorized the health benefits, am I correct? Correct, there's not presently, uh, there's, we, there's no ordinance or resolution that we could locate that uh, indicates that uh, mem council members uh, would receive health care benefits. But with that said, then the actual ordinance should be someone introducing ordinance to authorize it. So with that, so with the, we shouldn't have to take a vote on it should, since it was not authorized, it should be eliminated immediately. So again, there's a state statute that, uh, in our discussions, there's a state statute that allows municipalities to uh, provide health care benefits uh, for elected officials. Actually, the, the uh, state statute talks about defining uh, for purpose of the health care benefits uh, as employees and it said it can be extended. Um, it just has been this, since, certainly since I've been here, uh, the policy of the uh, township to allow uh, council members to have uh, health care benefits. Um, so from that perspective, uh, to affirmatively um, stop that, I think there would need to be a official action by the, by the uh, governing body because, again, it's been something that it's happened over time. Um, the state statute allows for it. Um, while it doesn't speak in terms of um, how a, a township addresses it other than it permits it. Uh, what you do have in your code uh, with respect to employees in general, um, de dealing with health care benefits for non-council members, uh, there's provisions that talk about council members having, uh, I mean, employees having health care benefits. I think that to the extent that uh, the council doesn't want to uh, proceed with that policy, again, I think there should be an affirmative action taken uh, by the uh, governing body to uh, either permit it, I mean to exclude it since it's already been an ongoing practice. Well, whether or not it's a past practice, if it's, right, if it's wrong, it's wrong. I mean, we're not union. This is not something that's been collectively bargained. Right, but again, the stat, there's a state statute that allows for it. Mm. So, so I think the question becomes, is that something that the uh, governing body, that particular health care benefits, if they want to continue that practice of allowing council members to receive that, the health care benefits? Okay, well, we're not designated as full-time or part-time. We're on a stipend, am I correct? Well, actually, under the ordinance, you receive a salary. Okay. All right, well, this is an ordinance that I'm, I'm pushing because it would save the township a lot of money. You know, it's money that could be used whatever the, whatever the best interest of the administration, whether it's for public safety, EMS, police, and whatnot. I think the fact that we have part-time employees who don't get health benefits, such as crossing guards who are out in the elements day to day, you know, for us to, to accept them is hypocritical. And I think the administration would support it because, I mean, they, they did put out a mailer attacking a long-time employees. We can't lower your taxes because of uh, taxpayer-funded paychecks. And, and I'll make the bodies. motion. It also uh, includes retirement and health benefits. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Can anyone else? Question question? I mean, we the, can't. Question to the attorney. Have I been recognized? I haven't. Merwin. Yes, yes, Mr. Merwin. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Mark, how does the state statute allow municipalities to give state uh, to give health care benefits to the governing body? What would what would the step be? To well, yeah, the, the 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 statute doesn't specify the step. Uh, it just says that um, a municipality can provide health care benefits. Um, so it doesn't expressly state what that step is. Um, again, I think the better practice would be having an ordinance since that would be consistent with what you have for the township has with respect to employees. Um, but again, to the extent that um, you want to do, a, you, could, you could do a resolution. Um, but again, I think from that perspective, you still require the five votes. But since you're dealing with uh, that particular benefit and you have a provision that talks about compensation in your code, um, 
And, and when you read that particular section, 531, while well, reference uh, talks about compensation of council member being 6,000 per annum, um, it also talks about increasing, decreasing, or altering, uh, and it specifically states salaries, wages, or compensation. Uh, so it can be inferred that with respect to uh, a salary, wage, or compensation, that health benefits could constitute compensation as well. Um, because the code in the same same provision specifies what the what the amount being paid, and it talks about it being a salary. So um, I don't know that the ordinance is artfully drafted, um, but health care is generally a form of compensation as well, uh, and that's why I th I felt that the better practice would be is that it allows for compensation, it doesn't specifically call out health benefits, that it would would allow for an ordinance would be the practice. Uh, to, uh, to, to not allow it, um, but the statute itself uh, doesn't specify the process by which it would be pr uh, allowed other than just allowing it. What about our rules and regulations? What would it require? Again, there's, there's nothing specific on it, Mr. Merwin. It's, it's a matter of how the code's set up. It talks in terms of compensation, um, and so my sense, again, would be is based upon the, the existing provision, talking about compensation, that it would fall under that particular uh, provision um, and to disallow the, that, that as, a, as a means of compensation for, uh, for, the, for any council member and then you know, succeeding council members. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any comments? Dr. Greenberg? Yes, it's very unfortunate that I have to talk about this, but I find it quite sickening. I just said that one person up here took work for the town and took health benefits from the town from the MUA simultaneously. No, I'm I'm on, I'm speaking right now. So then the bottom line is the bottom line is this. I can tell you council members that sat on the MUA and then took it from here. I know people that worked in the county and then took it from from the town. That was wrong, and they changed, okay, when we brought it up. But that was, you want to talk about parties, that was their parties. When someone doesn't have health insurance and a state statute and they're allowed to get it, they should be able to get it. As far as if you don't have health, if you have health insurance and have a chance to get it from someone else, that's a different story. So when you're talking about this stuff, let's be a little bit serious about it. Then there's other that are fortunate enough that they retired and they have lifetime health benefits. That's great. I wish I was in my 40s and I could retire and I had health lifetime benefits. May you live to 100. But the bottom line is that you'll be taking money front longer. And I appreciate the service that you do when you're working. But when you do retire, you will be able to have health benefits longer than you ever worked. So now let's take it. There's certain differences between private sector and also public sector. And also when you have a contract, a contract is a contract. If it's in your contract that you can get health benefits, I have no problem with it. Why are we pitting people against other people? Let's be genuine, not be disingenuous here and do the right thing. This is so wrong doing this. And I said, and I will say, it is wrong if you have another entity that you can get health benefits, don't take it from the town. And I'll say it once again, I do not take health benefits from the town, and I work in the private sector, and the only way I can get health benefits is because I pay for them my own. And the day I retire, I will still be paying for my health benefits forever and my pension. I will not get a pension subsidized by anyone else unless I was smart enough to save money when I worked. And that's the difference between public and private sector. But the bottom line is we should not be up here talking about other people. It should be isolated to a situation is if you can get health benefits from another entity, do the right thing by the township and don't take them from there. This discussion should begin and end with that concept. Thank you. Well, this Councilwoman, welcome. since you were directed, it, the reality is the difference between full-time, part-time, and, uh, and a stipend, okay? I That's work full-time here also. He has the floor. Okay. She says she ended. No, Mrs. Walker had a hand up, so you already spoke, so let's just let everyone have a turn, okay? Thank you. Thank you. First, I do not take the health benefits. Even though at my job I could have gotten $4,000 a year, they were available to me and I paid for them, so I took them. 
Now, as far as saying part-time, it depends on how you do this job. I was out four nights last week. I go to every possible zoning planning board. I'm, I go to HOA meetings. I go to a lot of things. So you can take this as a part-time job and just come here to the meetings and do nothing. But it's, it's very interesting that um, two of the people up here, they are getting health time, lifetime benefits from taxpayers. And of course, they're voting against this. Uh, maybe they shouldn't take them and help the taxpayers. But I, I do not take them. I don't even know who up here takes the benefits. I'm not even sure. But this job, it can be full-time or part-time, however you choose to do it. Like I said, I put a lot of effort and time into this job. I'm not taking the benefits, but like Dr. Greenberg said, if you don't have anywhere to get them, I, I don't see anything wrong. As long as you're doing a, a good job up here and you are putting the time in. Is there anyone else with council comment? Yes. But wait, Mr. Rizzoli. No, no disrespect to you. But can I just see if there's anyone else first before, you know, finishing up, okay? Anyone on this side? Yeah, yeah. put this on. They can't I, I hear. Okay, let's, let's continue on. All right, are we going to, Mr. Merwin, and then we're going to try to finish up these comments, okay? Yeah, I, I, the history professor at the other end, um, Excuse me, there's no need for the sarcasm, I, 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 okay? I, let's I, stop, okay. Listen, everybody likes to tell them, talk about history. We're trying to end this history. Right? Last week, we were talking about how Mr. hiring of Mr. Shah was going to save $100,000. And that was a, a laudable thing. But this week, when we're trying to save upwards of 100,000. In reality, if everybody took the, uh, the benefits, it would be uh, $330,000. But it's, it's good when they're trying to save money, but when somebody else is, they get all kinds of names called at them. And, um, but she's right on the money. I took those benefits when I worked here, all right? And I took them from the MUA when I was appointed on the MUA. She's 100% right. Must tell her when she's right. All right. Um, I had two young children, and I made sure that they got whatever they were able to get. The, um, the, this benefit here, I worked 40-something years to achieve my lifetime benefits. Mark probably had... Uh, 27 or so that he put in for his lifetime benefits. They were called collective bargaining agreements. There is no collective bargaining agreement for the township council. We're not a union. Anytime they spend money in this town, they usually have to pass an ordinance or the minimum a resolution. But now, hey, maybe we don't have to. But we're going to let the AG decide that because, believe me, tomorrow morning I'm going to be offering a letter to the AG and, and going to inquire it on my own. We are spending taxpayers' dollars without the benefit of an ordinance or a resolution. All right? Whatever the reasons are, you know, it's okay when it's politics for them, but we're the bad people if we bring politics into it. We didn't bring politics into it. We think that this is a very good thing. And let's stop it now. So we don't have to have the history. And then we don't need history lessons every week or every meeting. And we'll go from there. Are you, okay, are you through, Mr. Merrill? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Yes. Motion and second. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Rizzoli. Mr. Rizzoli put his hand up first, okay. Really quick, if there was no personal attacks anywhere. The only attack came from Councilman Walker talking about people getting lifetime benefits with their, with their jobs. The reality is I did my time. You shouldn't plan your life based upon political appointed positions. That's a reality. Whether you like to hear it or not, it's tough. That's a fact. We like to deal with facts. The entire council meeting last time I'd hear about saving money. It's saving money when it's convenient for certain people on this council. Okay, I can get to a lot of other things with, about artificial ice that we took credit for that's a waste of $300,000. The reality is this is about saving money for the residents, short-term and long-term. 
If people are offended by it, I suggest don't plan your life according to political appointments. I didn't plan my life that way. Council Merwin in it. I'm sure all the council people don't take the health benefits. If the facts hurt, then I'm sorry. I'm pushing forward with this ordinance. I just want to thank everybody for their uh, time tonight. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Walker? I didn't plan my life around a political appointment. I do not take the health benefits. Also, since it is a state statute, if the council ever changes, in one meeting, they can give themselves the benefits back. So let's not be fooled here, okay? This is like, it's a joke. And, it, and in the next meeting, they could bring them back. So let's just stop. Okay, is there anyone else that has comments? Okay, um, I'm, wait, I'm just gonna close the, the comments myself. Um, I've been a council person now for nine years. Um, I work for the state of New Jersey currently, so I do not take the health benefits, and I also am not allowed to take a salary. So I am here as a volunteer. Uh, as far as full-time, part-time is concerned, I have to be honest with you, you can talk to my residents, and I don't think anyone's gonna tell you that I'm a part-time person. I, I don't think you can you know, define this job as part-time, but that's just me. And I do agree that you can change this, and you can change it again next month, and you can change it again next year. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. If you don't need the benefits, you don't take the benefits. If you do and you have nowhere else to take them, that's what's been done time and time again. And I didn't see anyone up here about this last year, the year before, the year before that, and so on. So my opinion is that I really don't think that we should move forward with this. Thank you. If I just can make one more comment, not to, but the, just so, to, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't take benefits either. Um, <laughs> but as a, as a point, um, just recall that the, the expenditure for it is included in the budget, and the budget's voted upon so ultimately, uh, council does approve for the expenditure for the health care benefits. That's the authority by which uh, you permit the, uh, the, the expenditure um, for uh, health care. Still? Mm -hmm. What is the consensus? Do we have a motion? Yes, I do. Okay, and a second. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so let's let's okay. do a roll call, please. Mrs. Brown? Abstain. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? It, um, What's the, could you read it one more time for me? Yeah, this is a, and then Ms. Merwin, or Ms. Rizzoli can, it's a motion to uh, proceed with uh, drafting an ordinance that would not allow council members uh, to receive health care benefits. Uh, no. <clears throat> Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? No. Mr. Paschetti? No. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? No. Uh, uh, President Sohar? No. Three yes, five no, one abstention. Okay. All right. And the final thing this evening is council member comments. I know, Mr. Murphy, you had comments. I have uh, two comments. Uh, one, um, the people up here today speaking about the cats. Uh, Anita, um, not Anita, what's your name? Councilman uh, greenberg Belli, uh she spent a lot of time on that ordinance, and um, it, it was a tough thing to get through, but they finally got it through, and I'm glad to see that somebody's actually doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I agree, it's costing them thousands of dollars. Um, I don't know who's putting the sign up there, but when things are happening, I was hoping maybe that could be your first job. I, and I, I make it sure. What, <laughs> no, no, maybe to make sure that let them put the stuff on a boardwalk if they destroy it before that. But no, it's not. Um, I, can I make um, a, a comment though, John? Yes. Okay. okay. The, the I I know where their feeders. They said the board, but here's just so everyone understands the boardwalk and then the beach is the county where those feeders are. Are, there's a grassy knoll that goes up to the boardwalk. That's where those feeders are because there's a separation between county and the township. Didn't they have to move and, them? But wait a second. There were other, sadly, other people go down there 
and the main concern for me is the safety of the cats. They have done a phenomenal job where they said there was over 50 cats at one time. They now have it down to 13. Those cats are vaccinated, they're spayed and neutered. You can see with the ear tip. Where the feeders are goes mm. from the grassy knoll up to the board, not on the boardwalk or the beach. And the problem, what they said, that people were taking their things and, and um, destroying them. They spent a lot of money for them. They, they go, they're so dedicated. They go um, multiple times a day. And the problem is that people, they don't have control of other people's oh, cats I, coming oh, okay. there. I thought they had put signs up there, do not no. put stuff on the boardwalk. Well, no, something. there were signs that were put up saying that this is a controlled colony. And at okay. one time, um, you know, they don't want people to feed at the jetties or anywhere else. They had to get those cats out of the jetties because when the tide changed, there was kittens okay. that were, you know, being... Um, drowned and things like that it was you want to feed them in a contained controlled area for a short amount of time in the morning and the evening so then you don't have to worry about um, other cats and other okay. animals coming but the problem is you cannot stop and say oh other cats you can't come here we don't even know where all these other cats are coming but okay. they've invested a lot of time and energy into it and I appreciate okay. you for bringing that up uh, and uh, Mr. Business Administrator um, Forget about that. And I, <laughs> I, I do want to congratulate you. Send me the job. I do want to congra congratulate you on your position, and I will work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I the other issue work. I have is the veteran. I understand that we said that we have enough homes. We've, we've met the, the amount of homes we can have for veterans. But the veterans are the nucleus of our country. These are the people who have risked their lives and def defended, defended our country. I don't think you can ever say we have enough homes for them. From listening to him, it was a sad story here, people sleeping in their cars and stuff. I think we should, you got, you're building these, a lot of these apartments that I'm not happy with. Why don't you see if you can do something with them, just something to take care of veterans. I feel the veterans should come first. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> any other council comments? Okay, I'll start down there, Mr. Mer uh, Mr. Merwin. Yeah, could uh, I get an uh, update on my uh, crossroads resolution? It never came back. For the housing component in the crossroads, we took the vote. Well, the, the vote was to make a resolution and oh, come back to vote on that Mr. resolution. Mr. The next meeting. Okay, David will be on for the next meeting. Okay, very good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Anyone else have council comments? Yes. Yes. Quick question, council. Status on the marijuana ordinance? Yes. <laughs> that was uh, um, going back. Uh, one of the things I was talking about, and I was putting it together in the last meeting, I obviously couldn't make it some uh, personal issues, but one of the things I was going to do or wasn't sure. Um, based upon comments was a outright prohibition. Uh, and I thought that was the direction where the council wanted. Um, so from that perspective, that's, I'm looking around and, and researching that issue. I think that's, that's what the, my draft's gonna be. So I'll have that for the next meeting as well. Thank you, council. You're welcome. Okay, any other, any good? Okay, down this way, Mrs. Walker. Yes, I, I, I'm very sad up here seeing what's happening because I came to council meetings for years before I ran. And I think before you run, you should have to come for at least a year so you know the history of the town. I think it's very important. It helps with you vote, where you vote. But I can see things are becoming very political up here. As far as with the administrative report, there was a lot of talk that um, they did not want the administrative report read. And I believe it's because they don't want what the good things that are happening in town to be put out to the public. It's very important when the report's, report's read because at home the public doesn't know what's going on and I think it's very, it has a lot of good things in it and um, not voting for it is just being silly as far as I'm concerned. And um, that's all. All right, anyone else? Mr. Piskitty. Thank you. Okay, a number of things. Um, yeah, I did call Mr. Shaw a bean counter, but he is a real good bean counter. 
I mean, for the last six, I mean, I didn't, never meant that as, dis, you know, disparagingly. I, I meant that as a quality, uh, uh, because you have watched every dollar and penny in this town for the last six years and really turned around the town. Okay. This is a matter of record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you can go and look and see where we were seven, eight years ago History. and where we are today. And this town is doing so much better. We're, we're, we're bond, our bond rating is double A plus. We're on a, on a road to get a triple A bond rating. And that, that goes to Mr. Shaw's credit. Um, I did change my vote. And I seriously had to consider all the different consequences. I didn't want to uh, put the town at risk and not having a business administrator and leaving that position empty. It's a, such a critical, critical position. I felt Mr. Shaw actually was the best person for the job at the moment, and I've changed my vote to yes in support of Mr. Shaw. Um, in a year and a half, uh, when the next mayor or this mayor gets reelected, there'll be another appointment at that time, and we can have a, a further discussion then. But midstream, I felt was not a good thing to do for the town or for the residents of our town. And I think that Mr. Shaw does an outstanding job and uh, he deserves to do the job, finish it out for the next year and a half. And then we can worry about it in a year and a half. Um, I know there was something else. Uh, the thing in the, like, uh, like our lawyer just said, the, the, um, our benefits, the benefits for the, the council members is already a budgeted item. It's in there because um, it could be voted down or up at any point. So it has to be accounted for. So it's in there. Okay, so you're not saving any money. If we voted no, you, you wouldn't be saving any money because the money has to be put in the budget because the council can overturn that at any time. So they, in finance, they have to plan for that. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to say. So look, if anybody has any questions about you know, any, any, any vote that I put forward, I give it a lot of thought and um, I'm my own person. I don't, I don't vote because somebody else tells me to vote or uh, party line or anything like that. I vote for the resident and I believe I made the best choice tonight. Thank you. Okay, council comments, anyone? Dr. Greenberg, and then Ms. Murphy. Well, either one first. Um, Mrs. Walker, I don't know how you can say that it's political this year. Don't tell me it wasn't political the last couple of years. I mean, every time something didn't go your way, everybody got upset. It's, it's going to be political. I was trying to stop that. I'm having a problem. I don't know if it's never going to be political. Um, I would just, I would like to see the people, I would like to see the, <clears throat> the council get together somehow and work as a team. But um, you can't say it was, it, it's always been political. I mean, now you have control, you didn't get your way and you changed the vote. So it doesn't matter what happens. It's if you can count the five and that's the story. Dr. Greenberg? I would like to say something. Um, sometimes when you're up here and you make a vote, um, you base it on, obviously you try to be prepared and get the most information that you can. But I can look back in history, and if everyone looks back to when Lombardi Field was voted on, um, the resources where that was, those resources were gonna come from for um, redoing the um, field and the stadium, there was a vote here and it went down and it came back so it's not really that unusual thing if you know history mr warren so i if i'm attacked for knowing history i think history if you know your history sometimes you're if you know it then you're you know you won't fail but the bottom line is it does happen and i don't think a verbal attack or um really conjuring up some scheme or um something that why someone did it you know some people come to a different opinion, and that's what's good about this government. You can do that. That happens. So with that said, I would really just like to congratulate Mr. Shaw. It's a position well-deserved. 
You worked very hard. You served the town well. And um, I wish you all the best. And I wish this council all the best, too. And happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. <laughs> OK, anyone else comments? We're good. OK. One more, John. Let's go. <laughs> I just want to say something that Anita brought up. Uh, my father, this is a crazy story. My father played basketball for St. Cecilia. And he had told me Vince Lombardi was his coach. I said, look, you play basketball. He coached football. He said, no, we had a coach. He was, my father was a two-year, uh, two-time All-American. And sure enough, I opened up his yearbook, and there he is, uh, right in front of Vince Lombardi. I was shocked. So anyway, in 1973, I was in a, a bar called the Oasis, where basically the pre-meetings used to take for the council. And um, they said, hey, Jack, do you think you could go up and we'd like to name the field uh, Memorial Vince Lombardi Memorial Field? He said, yeah. He asked me, I just got my driver's license. Would I like to take a ride up? We were going to go look for a friend of his, Joe Lombardi, who was Vince Lombardi's brother. So we drove up to his house. His wife said he just went, I don't know, Joe's bar or something. We go there. They said, oh, you just missed him. So my father had a couple beers. We ran to about four bars. And then my father, at the second bar, my father asked me to drive for up at regular reasons. And then I said, what are you going to tell him? He goes, what do you mean what are you going to tell him? So we get back. And he said, so did you talk to him? Yeah, Joe said the family would be honored. He was so excited about it. To this day, that sign still stands there. <laughs> and that was all, they, he never talked to anybody, but that's why it's there. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Okay, so do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move it. Okay, second. and a second? Second. Thank you. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mr. Cahill? Yes. Dr. Greenberg? Yes. Mr. Merwin? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Bischetti? Yes. Mr. Rizzoli? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. President Soha? Yes. Nine yes.